And now we have Asia Long. Starting out as an activist, Asia became a local inspiration to members of her community and beyond with her series Flowers to the People and for Colored Boys. Tonight, she's gonna to talk about her life and the use of art to escape poverty. She says her part of her mission in life is to help others on their journey in life by giving them the space to be open with themselves. She is a mother, wife, and mentor, but we know her as visual artist Asia Long. Please welcome Asia to our TED Talk stage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'ma just wing it, so. <laughs> um, my slides are just my artwork, so you guys can roll it how you see fit. Hello, good friends, and good evening. My name is Asia Long, and ideally the plan was to come here and discuss my evil plan of how to solve all the world's problems using art <laughs> and possibly gain a cult-like following. <laughs> but that seems like a lot of work, and I'm kind of lazy, so. Um, I'll just start off with introducing myself and telling about my background and how I discovered art. So I grew up in poverty. Um, I didn't have a lot growing up, but I always had, I started my creative journey very early. And I remember, I tell people in the Missouri in this story all the time, about how my mom had crayoned a picture one night just because she had to help me with a school project. And I just thought it was so cool, like how she did it so, so good and so fast. And I needed to do that. Like, after she did that, like, I was just hooked. I was absolutely, like, I was on this journey. I was on this ride. And I found myself using that to cope with life, um, to cope with just boredom, to cope with the struggle of my background and upbringing. Um, I found myself using that to gain time with her. Uh, she worked like three jobs, you know, she's a single parent trying to put food on the table and we ate good, so. <laughs> but I just, I used it. I used it to help me get through everything. I used it for um, just as a therapeutic thing for me. And then my mom passed away when I was about 12 years old and I lost it. I stopped drawing and I used to draw all the time. I used to draw like in the back of church. I used to draw just out of boredom. I just used to draw, just like you could always catch me drawing. But I stopped. I stopped for a long time just because life got in the way. And I think that's the thing about art is life somehow gets in the way and takes us away from the creative beings we naturally are. Um, life requires us to kind of fit into certain boxes and things and uh, limits us and that creative part of us doesn't seem maybe that useful. So yeah, we, we have a habit of just kind of, you know, putting it in our pocket. So I came back to art um, a while later. I was like in my 20s. And I realized that it was like I never left, like art was there waiting for me, you know, like art always held space for me. Art always understood me, art never judged me. Like art was really my best friend, like we go together, you know? <laughs> Real bad. <laughs> but I used that for myself, I just, I was like, this has been through with me throughout my whole life. And so I started making a mission to free people from their lives using art. So um, I started art therapy and I started with combat veterans and now I do local teams, this, that, and the other. But 
getting people to understand art and what it is. So I'll start there too. Art is expression. It's just like a, a fluid space where you can be anything and possibilities are endless. And you can check out of your everyday life, you know, like you can just kind of hyper-focus into this drawing or painting or music and let go. It's, it's freedom. And it's somehow, sometimes radical when you think about it and uncomfortable for some people because they're used to their boxes. They're like, no, the box is safety. We get in the box. But no, it's, it's, it's just its own expressive thing that we are all born with, but we lose somehow along the way. You know, when we're young, we're born with an active imagination and creativity and things are just fluid and the possibilities are just endless. And then as you grow up in life, it gets limited, you know, like it is no longer. It takes a lot of work and uh, intentionality to protect and preserve that part of you. And so I find myself in my mission trying to bring this back out to people, just getting them back to their roots and that humbling feeling of what it means for them to be a creative person. But that's art. You know, my friend John says art is light and light is a foundation for seeing and a metaphor for knowing. So I keep that guy around quite often. <laughs> he I. But that's all it is, and I think that that type of freedom can be um, just, I don't know, not necessarily embraced by people because it seems so foreign, it seems so long ago. Uh, but as soon as they start working on a project or get into um, a certain piece, they're right back at it. And it feels good, it feels reassuring, it feels therapeutic. And so I'm gonna encourage everybody to um, take this path and try it um, when you leave here, is when you see a piece of artwork, think to yourself, like, what does this mean to me? What is this saying to me? You know, you could like it, you could not like it, you can say, like, that didn't fit with my life at all. You know, like, the thing about art is it holds a space for truth, you know, and 12 people can see one piece of artwork and get 12 different things out of it, like it spoke to them in so many different ways. And it's because it really is a language of all knowing that, you know, we don't even have the words for it yet. And so when you leave here, visit your local art gallery, support your local art foundations, um, you know, get involved in that community if there's an art district, things like that because art can really bridge that gap for um, the world, but most importantly, you. Thank you. <laughs> no, I'm just like, <laughs> oh, I didn't do the click. I ain't got no clicker.